Data fetching is really not rocket science. You can use server-side rendering for a really fast initial page load, or you could use client-side rendering for real-time features or any sort of dynamic interactivity after the initial page load. Is there a way to do both, where server and client come together, do a little handshake, and you get both benefits of server and client-side rendering in the same app? Turns out, yes, there is, and I'm definitely not the first one figuring that one out, but it works super well in the app that I'm building, and I think you might like it. So here's the idea, right? Client-side fetching is good at a lot of things. For example, anything that involves a real-time functionality, either through polling or, for example, if you wanted a persistent web sockets connection, that's what we use client-side for. The client is persistently connected to our backend for these real-time approaches. But client-side fetching is definitely not good at everything. For example, getting a fast initial page load. So we have the user right here making a request to your web application, and then we have the server processing that request. User makes an HTTP request, and then ideally later gets back the data from the server. However, the server doesn't just have the data, the server also needs to get the data from somewhere. In this case, that's going to be your database in 99% of cases. And that database then gives back the data to the server, at least in the ideal case. But the thing with client-side fetching is this doesn't happen right away because the server does not know what to fetch yet. So there is no database connection in the first round trip that the HTTP request here takes to the server and then gets sent back. Instead, what happens is we have JavaScript. Let's copy it over here. Instead, the response from the server in case of React, for example, is going to be JavaScript that gets sent back to the client client and now the user is going to be pretty pissed. Let's draw a sad face because before anything happens on the page, this JavaScript first needs to get executed and then this JavaScript will make another request. So in essence, everything needs to happen again. This JavaScript only notices after the first round trip that, hey, I need some data from the backend, then goes ahead, sends a fetch request to the server. That server then fetches the data from the database. And finally, that data then arrives on the server and gets sent back to the client in the second round trip. And the depending on how much data we need, there might even be more occurrences of the same round trip, leading in pretty slow initial page loads. Server-side rendering, on the other hand, is pretty good for initial page loads because this round trip essentially is saved. We only open a connection to our server through the initial HTTP request that gets the data from our database and sends it back as pre-rendered HTML back to the client. That's good for SEO, but not only that, the initial page load is probably pretty fast. And the important takeaway that I want you to notice here is that this distance between the server and the database needs to be as physically close as possible because the longer this distance, this is essentially the expensive part in the data fetching process. Large amounts of data can be transferred from the server to the database. And especially if you don't only have one request, but for example, if you have multiple requests going from the server to the database and back, this is this right here is going to be super expensive. So the best idea is to keep the server and the database as close as possible. That is way more important than keeping the client and the server as close as possible. Now, you might say, if server-side fetching is so good, then why don't we use it all the time? And the answer is exactly right here. Well, we can't. For some things, we need a persistent client connection. It doesn't have to be persistent, but we need a client connection in order to get data from the server right to the client. For example, for the side project I'm building at the moment, this dashboard right here is supposed to be a real-time with a polling approach, where every five seconds we make a request to the server, ask, hey, is there new data? And if there is, then we refresh the dashboard. And getting this beautiful hybrid data fetching approach right between server and client is actually pretty straightforward. Now, this is not Next.js specific, by the way, but I do think Next is the framework where it's by far the simplest. For example, because of these React server components, where we can simply mark a component as asynchronous and then perform our initial data fetching action inside of there. The initial data that goes in the dashboard. We can then pass it as a prop from the server where we fetch it into the client component dashboard view. Now, if you wanted to try to optimize the performance, make this as fast as humanly possible, you might be tempted to make the runtime the edge runtime. In Next, that is super straightforward and essentially promises a better performance. However, you need to be really, really careful in this approach because what you essentially just did, and while this diagram actually looks really bad, let's clean this up a bit. Essentially, what you just did by declaring the 
runtime as edge, what might be super tempting in the first place is you move the server really close to the user. The edge runtime is both a runtime and a geographical location. And that geographical location is the closest to your users. If the user is in India, then the function will also be run in India, no matter where your database is. And you remember what I said earlier, this is the expensive part. We want to keep this as close as humanly possible. And that is why we can simply also declare the region where our function should execute. And of course, that shouldn't be close to the user, but as close to the data source as possible. And that's the server part done. That's the initial data fetching done. And that's good and all, but that's only literally half of the hybrid data fetching approach between client and server. That's why in the dashboard view, the client side component, we first receive the initial data we got from the server and then pass it into a custom hook. Now, the reason we're passing this into a custom hook, or at least why I like to do it, is because, well, we could literally declare this inline. This is our client side component. This is our dashboard. We could handle all the data logic and processing in here. But one of the most important things that I learned at my full time dev job is separation of concerns. And I think this hook approach is much cleaner by keeping all the data logic away from our actual view, from our actual component. Now, inside of that hook, the logic is actually super straightforward. Whether you use React Query or TRPC doesn't really matter. It kind of solves the same purpose, one in a type safe way and one not really, but same purpose. We can now poll for real time data. You could also handle WebSocket connections here. Anything that needs a client side connection can be handled inside of this hook. We can simply pass in the initial data that we got from the server, meaning now we don't have to fetch it from the client. We did get it from the server initially and all the polling, for example, a refetching every 10 seconds can now beautifully be handled inside of this hook, essentially completing our hybrid approach between server and client, where we mash together the initial data from the server for fast page load, and then all the rest is handled on the client every 10 seconds, for example. And this right here is the end result or dashboard. When we click on that, then the initial page load right now will be done on the server. Bam, we have all our data right away. No real loading states here for a fast initial page load close to the database. And all the rest, we can take a look at the network tab in here is then handled every 10 seconds, every five seconds, doesn't really matter on the client side. Hell yeah, that just works. Again, I'm not the first one to figure this out. There were already people talking about this, but it works really well. And I thought you might just like it too. You might like this video as well, here or there, not sure yet. That's me refactoring a beginner React project. That's going to be it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye bye.